Hi, I'm Craig, and welcome to Market Power. I have to talk about Planet Zoo and the economics in Planet Zoo because there's some fun economics that are happening there, and I have the economic solution to the problem Planet Zoo is facing. It's a weird one, though, and I want to make sure you understand why I'm coming to this solution. Let's talk about Planet Zoo economics. So what's happening in the Planet Zoo economy? If you're watching this video, it's likely that you already play Planet Zoo. And so let me just give a summary for the people who don't play Planet Zoo. I look at Planet Zoo as like a Sim City for zoos. It has these really high fidelity animations. Anyway, it just released a new version called Franchise Mode and it has had this really fun effect where people can like visit each other's zoos and you can exchange animals online. And these kind of things have actually created some economic problems. So these economic problems were shown to me in an article. So on Twitter, Josh Gann sent me this article. So if you're interested in more ex economic explanations or you have ideas for videos, like let me know on Twitter. My handle is at MarketPowerYT. But he sent me this article from Rock Paper Shotgun and it's by Nate Crowley where he explains all these economic problems that have happened in Planet Zoo. And he talks about all these fun things. There's like monetary policy issues, there's the market for lemons. I'm not gonna touch on all that. I just wanna talk on the basics of supply and demand because what has happened is that these prestigious animals like pandas and maybe elephants, I can't remember all the animals, they are, there aren't that many of them in the game right now. And so prices are really high. And these high prices aren't bringing in more of these animals. So in a normal market, high prices would encourage people to produce more goods and that will bring the price down. The problem with this is that you have these animals that are breeding and it takes them a long time to produce offspring. And so getting those, you can't just get these offspring out onto the market. So even if price is going high, well, people can't respond. We call this inelastic supply. I've got a whole video on understanding elasticity of supply and demand. I'll put it up here. But basically what you should know is even if prices are going up, the, the animal supply cannot respond. On the other hand, there are some animals that are incredibly fertile. They have really quick turnarounds. And apparently those are like warthogs and ostriches and peafowls where people can produce these things really quickly. So we would say that the elasticity of supply is really flat in this case. It's very elastic. People can respond to high prices. And so we have this problem where as you have demand increasing on this platform, the supply of animals can't respond. And so what we need to do to bring down prices is to increase the supply of these prestigious animals. And that's where the solution I have comes in. Now, Frontier, the, the people who made this game, have tried to address this problem by increasing the supply of animals by just like helicopter dropping their own animals onto the, uh, the animal market. Now, this is kind of an unsatisfying solution because the nice thing about this game is that there's this kind of realism where you're breeding animals and you can put these animals out onto the market. And that's, you know, if you just have the developer dropping animals onto the market, that just feels like unsatisfying. So is there a way that we could naturally increase supply without having them drop these animals onto the market? And there is, because we have to think about the barriers. What are the main barriers to increasing supply? So there are two problems that I think that are really important here. One is that you need two animals to breed, right? You need a male and a female, and so those animals you have to have them in the same location to breed. So even if they're already super valuable, trying to get them in the same zoo is nearly impossible. And then these animals, when they do breed, they have long gestation times and small litters. So you don't produce that many for each pair of animals. Those are the two problems. Is there a solution to this? Yeah, in the real world, we already have a solution for this and we could open up a market solution in this economy. And that is selling animal semen. I live in an agricultural community. I see little advertisements for bull semen as I'm driving down the road. Like this is a real solution in the real world and it solves this problem, right? It fixes both of these problems. So you don't have to have both of these animals in the same place. Instead, you could have a male and you could have females scattered all over the economy and you could sell that male semen to the other zoos so they could artificially inseminate their animals and then that all of a sudden creates this new market and a new competition 
where all of the male owners are now competing with to sell, the female owners are competing to buy, and so we're gonna have this, we're gonna expand out the supply of these animals because we're gonna be able to not have to have them in the same location, and you can have one male breeding with multiple females at the same time. This is, this is the market-oriented solution we need to fix Planet Zoo. And Frontier might be a little weirded out by this. If you want to talk to me about it, I'm happy to be your economic consultant on expanding the supply of these prestigious animals in your game. But if you're interested in more videos about how I go through the economics of video games, I recommend this one on Zelda and Breath of the Wild. And if you want to check out some of my other recent videos, go ahead and go here. Please subscribe and we will see you next time on Market Power.